Agents of a unit so secret that if compromised, the US government usually deny all knowledge of them. Today, we're going to tell you about CIA's Special Activation Center. With fewer than 100 operators, SAC is regarded as the most covert special operations force operating within the United States. Despite not being a military unit, SAC is a functioning special missions unit with a variety of tasks, including long-range surveillance, bomb damage assessments, prisoner snatching, material retrieval, and sabotage. SAC and how it works. Being the most covert special operations force, the SAC chooses members from other special mission organizations like Delta Force, the Naval Special Warfare Development Group, the Intelligent Support Activity, and the 24th Special Tactics Squadron. Most recipients of the Distinguished Intelligence Cross and Intelligence Star during hostilities or incidents that involve the CIA have been SAC paramilitary operations officers. This is one of the highest honors bestowed by the CIA in appreciation of exceptional bravery and excellence in the line of duty. SAC have been so active and useful over the years that the majority of the stars on the memorial wall at CIA headquarters represent agents who died on active duty. SAC Group provides the US President with an alternative when covert military operations or diplomatic efforts are not practical or politically impossible. Moreover, unlike other US special mission troops, SAC can be directly directed by the President or the National Security Council. Interestingly, SAC has a significantly smaller membership than the majority of the other special missions groups. As the direct action branch of the CIA's Directorate of Operations, SAC carries out unconventional warfare, ambushes, raids, sabotage, and other direct action missions. SAC's Political Division As part of American foreign policy, the Political Action Division of SAC engages in covert psychological operations, commonly referred to as black propaganda, as well as covert influence to bring about political change in other nations. The most important type of political activity undertaken by SAC is covert interference in foreign elections. The secret group provides financial assistance to supported candidates, media counseling, technical assistance for public relations, voter turnout or political organizing activities, legal know-how, ad campaigns, help with poll watching, and other direct action strategies. Agents such as subverted government officials exert influence on policy decisions by encouraging them to act in ways that advance US policy objectives while acting in their official capacities. The SAC worked mostly in the background until the War on Terror increased awareness of SAC's presence. Consequently, SAC's paramilitary units began to enter Afghanistan in the fall of 2001 with the mission of pursuing Al-Qaeda commanders, facilitating the entry of U.S. Army Special Forces and leading the United Islamic Front for the salvation of Afghanistan in its fight against the Taliban government. Prior to the 2003 invasion of Iraq, SAC units also defeated Ansar al-Islam in Iraqi Kurdistan and organized, trained, and led the Kurdish Peshmerga forces to beat the Iraqi army in northern Iraq. SAC is also equipped with a full combined arms covert paramilitary. The heart of each branch is made up of paramilitary operations officers, who frequently switch between them to obtain experience in all facets of SAC. As a result, paramilitary operations officers are prepared to work in a variety of settings. Many American security analysts consider these officers to be the most elite of the U.S. Special Missions units, since they are drawn from the most highly trained units in the U.S. military and given considerable further training to become CIA clandestine intelligence operatives. Special Operations Group the SAC offers a pool from which the agency's various departments can recruit qualified individuals to create a Special Operations Group, or SOG. As instructed by the President, SOGs are short-term squads that conduct paramilitary operations such as sabotage, material retrieval and snatching, bomb damage assessment, counter-terrorism operations, raids, hostage rescues and other tasks. 
The Special Activities Group is in charge of high-threat military and covert operations in the US. As a result, the government does not want to be open-affiliated with it, and none of the unit's members are allowed to wear anything that may be mistaken for belonging to the US government. As the Directorate of Operations Action Branch for the CIA, SAC carries out direct action missions like raids, ambushes, sabotage, targeted executions, and unconventional warfare like training and commanding foreign guerrilla and military formations in battle. When operating in hostile settings, SAC also employs paramilitary officers to undertake special reconnaissance that may be intelligence or military-driven. Due to their extensive training as case officers, paramilitary operations officers carry out covert human intelligence operations all around the world. The Nature of Mission it's worth mentioning that the missions of SAC are varied as they depend on recruitment, instruction, and command of personnel in military operations. Unlike other special missions teams, SAC agents integrate special operations and covert intelligence capabilities in one person. These people can function in any environment, land, air, or at sea with little to no assistance. The SAC paramilitary officer's biggest strengths are operational agility, adaptability, and deniability. They frequently work in small teams of 2 to 10 personnel, with some missions being handled by a single officer. All members of these teams typically have substantial military tactical experience and a unique set of specialized talents not found in any other unit. Paramilitary operations officers are highly trained intelligence case officers who have all the covert abilities to gather human intelligence and, more crucially, to find assets among the indigenous troops they are training. Missions in Enemy Territory Paramilitary operations officers have played a key role against Mujahideen forces fighting the Soviet Army during the 1980s Soviet-Afghan War. Despite the fact that the CIA in general, and a Texas congressman named Charlie Wilson in particular, have garnered most of the attention, Michael G. Vickers was the primary architect of this plan. To identify senior leadership targets, SAC forces also carried out high-risk secret reconnaissance missions behind Iraqi lines. The early assassination attempts on Iraqi President Saddam Hussein and his top generals were the result of these missions. Although the initial airstrike against Hussein did not succeed in killing him, it did successfully remove his capacity to lead and govern his army. The command's capacity to respond to and maneuver against the American-led invasion force was considerably diminished by other successful attacks against important generals. Key Iraqi army officers were also persuaded by SAC operations officials to turn over their units once the fighting began or to refrain from resisting the invading army. Personnel from SAC also took part in the civil war in El Salvador. Some claim that the methods used to question detainees in El Salvador were precursors to those later employed in Iraq and Afghanistan. In fact, it was called the Salvador Option. Officers of the agency were under strong orders not to take part in interrogations of inmates and to stay away from the location where they were being held. Secret Attacks in Pakistan other than El Salvador, SAC was particularly active on the ground in Pakistan, targeting Al-Qaeda members for unmanned aerial vehicle intervention. In addition to training Pakistani paramilitary and regular army personnel, while also conducting HVT target operations alongside Pakistani special forces. Back then, when George W. Bush was president, he gave the go-ahead for SAC to conduct targeted airstrikes that resulted in the successful elimination of eight senior Al-Qaeda members before he left office. Rashid Raouf, who was known as the architect of a 2006 attempt to blow up planes traveling over the Atlantic, and the guy suspected of planning the September 20, 2008 bombing of the Islamabad Marriott Hotel, which claimed 53 lives, were among those killed by the SAC officials. 
After these two major killings, covert attacks greatly escalated under former President Obama. These continuous attacks resulted in as many as 50 Al-Qaeda members being killed in the month of May 2009 alone. After that, 60 Taliban members were killed in June 2009 while attending a funeral for fighters who had died in earlier CIA attacks. The CIA reported on August 6, 2009 that an SAC drone strike in Pakistan had killed Baitullah Mesud, who was one of the most prominent leaders among the local militants. SAC Center The Special Activities Center is divided into three categories – ground, maritime and airborne. All land assaults and land-based combat operations are handled by the ground branch whereas every water operation and assault is handled by the maritime branch. Moreover, the air branch flies a wide variety of aircraft types in civilian markings and is the modern equivalent of Air America, serving the US throughout the world. The air branch also sometimes helps in transporting the ground branch if it needs to insert into a particular location. The Armor and Special Programs branch is responsible for the development, testing and covert acquisition of new personnel and vehicle armor, as well as the maintenance of stockpiles of ordnance and weapons used by the SAC, almost all of which must be obtained from covert sources abroad, in accordance with US congressional directives. This is done in order to give SAC operatives and their foreign trainees plausible deniability. SAC under former president Under the former president Donald Trump, SAC started sending out small teams of paramilitary officers to hunt down terrorists and they were granted main command of CT operations in Afghanistan. Despite being the most covert unit in US special operations, many books have been written about the exploits of CIA paramilitary officers, including Shooting at the Moon, The Story of America's Clandestine War in Laos by Warner and Convoy, and Feet to the Fire, CIA Covert Operations in Indonesia by Convoy and Morrison. It's worth mentioning that the majority of experts view SAC as the principal force for unconventional warfare, whether that warfare entails inciting or suppressing an insurgency abroad. That's it from today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content and if you did, show some love and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.